What's up everybody, Showtime Doctor here with your banner review for the Aemon banner. Supposed to be yesterday and I'm sorry guys I missed out. I got so wrapped up in uh, trying to beat Kali so I could get you that kill video that I completely freaking neglected. I was working on so many things yesterday. And... Anyways, I'll get to all that later. So let's get to the banner. So first we'll start with Aemon here. I think I wish that they would just... I hate having to like redo the specs for everybody, but whatever. Alright, so 6 star. His uh, leadership is light attack, attack by 40%. He's a tank unit, so that's a little bit... You know, but hey, that's there for you if you need that light 40 damage. Uh, passive skill right here, right when you get the character, increases caster's evade by 40% and accuracy by 40%. And increases damage dealt by allies by 40% when the caster is imprinted with Revelation Signet. If you're new to the channel, uh, basically, for some reason, they still show the five-star hero versions on the summon banner. So I'm just giving you what the six-star final stats are going to be. Uh, his 60 here, once you unlock it, Draden Prophet has a high chance for the caster's turn to come more quickly at the start of the wave. So that's pretty cool, because you usually want your tank to go in case you need to taunt or what have you. Put up a defensive cooldown, perhaps. And then activates Resolve for one ally for one turn. If the ally takes fatal damage, restores the target of Resolve's HP by 50% and increase their attack by 50% for two turns. So PvP, PvE, that can be really solid. Everything in there right there. If you got like a, say like a Saya or someone like that and they're getting targeted and they got, it would have been a kill shot, but Resolve proc, maybe they one shot them before Ghost Girl could go off. Well now Saya's gonna get her health back and she's gonna hit a whole lot harder, or whoever you're whoever just happens to be targeted there. Dawn is one. You know, you got a single target here, 45% chance to taunt, which is pretty good for a base taunt. I believe that'll get up to at least 65% eventually. Uh, you know, assuming you can get lots of copies of them, which good luck. Yeah, <laughs> hundred percent chance to imprint the caster's revelation signet for a turn. If you forgot what revelation signet is. Basically, he gives himself a whole lot of accuracy, evasion, and increases the damage deal by the entire team, so it's pretty nasty. 100% chance, by the way, on his 1, and before I forget, 100% chance on his 2 as well. The so Signs of Destruction inflicts damage equal to 80% of attack to all enemies, 40% chance to taunt the target for 2 turns. I believe that'll get up to like 60-65% if you skilled up. 100% chance to grant all allies guaranteed counterattack one time for two turns. I believe this is on... Yeah, they don't really show the skill cooldowns here, do they? Maybe I should just go do these from the other window, but... Alright, I'm sorry guys, let me just go do that. They don't provide the proper information there, so it's kind of annoying. Just give me a second. Or the Draden, so Shadow Guild, yeah. Alright, here we go. So now we can see the skill ups properly. 65% is 1, like I thought. 70% actually chance to taunt, and it goes up to 128%. It's a 4 turn cooldown, okay. So that seems pretty... As fair as that skill's gonna get. This guy's pretty powerful if you haven't caught on already. Guaranteed counterattack's really nasty too, especially for someone like a Tayo. You know, someone that hits really hard or puts up a lot of uh, deep debuffs, like say uh, Edwin or Britain. Actually, maybe not so much Britain, even though it's good for Britain. But uh, who else? That girl's name Jackie. The girls who put up everyone that puts up uh, Melancholy. But anyways, let's keep going. 100% chance to imprint the caster with Revelation Signet. We went over that. On his 6 here, inflicts penetration damage. You go to 180% of attack to one enemy, and cast Engraving of Destruction for 2 turns. And we'll skip down here real quick. Engraving of Destruction inflicts damage equal to 100% of max HP when skill 3 is used. So basically, if Engraving of Destruction is on somebody and they use their skill 3, they're dead. Unless there's some type of like... Damage absorb, or maybe like a able shield, or something like that. And I still haven't tested it, so I'm not 100% sure on that. But I'm pretty sure it'll stop it because it's it does stop things like uh, uh, mental seal, etc. 
pain shield, that type of thing. Uh, we'll go back here. Inflicts damage equal to 180% of attack to two enemies adjacent to the target. 50% chance to cast Engraving of Destruction for two turns. So basically your primary target's going to get Engraving no matter what is what it looks like. And you have a fair chance on the other two targets in a cone area. And it's a two turn, by the way. So you effectively, against the AI, if they use their ult, they're going to one-shot themselves. Otherwise, PvP... You know, your defensive team, someone has to stop using their ultimate for two turns. That's pretty strong. And let's see what it eventually gets up to here. So 288% damage, that's pretty strong for a cone. You know, he's not he's not there for damage, Amon is, but I'm sure he could do deceptively decent damage for a tank. And it's 80% chance as you skill this up. So I'm kind of leaning, yeah, like my guildy Roan was talking about up is three just for that engraving of destruction or you could do this one for the taunt it's up to you but then this kind of like auto taunts almost not really i guess not 70 percent so there you go aemon in my opinion is the most ridiculous tank in the game pretty i don't want to say broken but yeah he's pretty broken <laughs> so and let's go back now, I'm going to say something, and it's probably going to be a little bit unpopular, but hear me out, okay? So Nemesis got her buffs, right? I am simultaneously happy and upset, and I will show you why. So leadership's still the same, crit strike damage. Her passive now, basically she gets a little mitigation, which is good for her. Uh, grants a shield equal to 20% of max HP for one turn when a dark orb is acquired. Uh, dark Orb is her stacking buff. If there are three or more Dark Orbs, when attacking consumes all to inflict damage equal to 120% of attack that ignores defense. I think that goes on all enemies. I haven't tested it, but I've heard it goes on all enemies. So that is very strong right there. That's probably outside of the speed buff, because she also got a passive speed buff. I think it was like 40 or 50 speed. Makes her pretty fast. That's pretty strong right there, so that's really good. Now we get here, flashback, her uh, 60 passive, obtains one Dark Orb at the start of the turn or wave. 100% chance to obtain one Dark Orb every time an ally inflicts unable to revive. So if you're running her with like Mary, Morgan, etc., that'll work out really well for her. Uh, and when you're getting a Dark Orb too, you're getting a little bit of mitigation shield there. So that's all pretty sick. Now her one... It basically works the same way, except she gets, uh, whenever Unable to Revive goes up, she's going to automatically get an orb right there. So the higher you get it, you know, the better chance and more damage, and then eventually it gets to two turns for the Unable to be Revived debuff. So that's fine. I like that. I will skip two for the second. Uh, we'll get back to that. Honor three is her all and inflicts penetration damage equal to 120% of attack to all enemies. 25% chance to make the enemy unable to revive for two turns. You get that up, start working it, eventually you get up to 45% chance on a 192. Pretty standard damage for a 5 target. Uh, but still pretty strong, especially if you can land unable to revive on like 2 or 3 guys, then you're going to get her passives going off. You know, more damage here, and then possibly that goes off after that. That's pretty nasty. I don't know, the thing I don't know about this is, does this go off after an attack, or before an attack? It seems like it goes off after, so it seems like there's a combination where you could do this, hit pretty hard, and then the 120% of attack that ignores defense will go off, assuming you have three Dark Orbs. That's pretty nasty. Now, this is where my bone of contention is. Read this closely. I'll give you guys 10 seconds. Read this closely. Notice anything different? If you haven't yet, let me show you. Increases the caster's critical strike chance by 15% for two turns and acquires three dark orbs. Increase caster's attack speed by 650. Now it's on a three turn cooldown and eventually you skilled up. Uh, uh, the attack speed gets pretty crazy and the crit strike chance goes up. But the thing that they took away that most people didn't notice also acquiring three dark orbs, obviously really good. 
It is no longer a team buff. It is a solo buff for the crit chance. So... She became better as a solo character, a solo attack character, but she sucks as a team character now. And I'm not going to say sucks like she's like super terrible, like Marduk or something like that. No, no, no. I mean, you could still use her. You can still... Uh, you could take her as your DPS into the uh, Kali dungeon and probably be fine. That, those AoEs would wreck pretty good. But... That really sucks. We lost something major there, guys. I'm sorry, we did. When it was a team critical strike chance. We lost something pretty major there. It used to be 40%. Ugh. That's sad, because there's like so many crit-dependent things in this game. Where if you had her around, it was just like almost insta-crit. So, on a three-turn cooldown for two turns, it used to be 40% additional crit chance, assuming you got her skills up. So that sucks, and that unfortunately kind of sours her for me. I still like her, I'm still going to build her eventually, I still have copies of her, but... Ugh. Just annoys me, and I'm sorry if I ruin your perception of this character, but she can still be good. You know, she can still put out deeps, but that's just too bad. All right, so we'll get to the last here on the banner here. Electra. So Electra, I'm sure most of y'all know her by now. She's before Aemon was out. She was arguably the best tank in the game for most roles. Now, yeah, kind of Aemon. <laughs> But Electra is still really strong, though. And if you happen to get an Electra and you're going for an Aemon, Electra will serve you very well. I use her for the Cali dungeon, uh, Pepe's. Basically, on a one, she has a good chance to taunt. It'll do a cone effect on occasion. The more you skilled up, the more of a chance it'll do a cone effect. Uh, has a chance of putting an attack down, like most tanks ones do, if you talent it right. The chance percentage is pretty good and it gets up to two turns. For the taunt, which not all tanks do, unfortunately, for some reason. That was cool. Her two, pretty good immunity here. Uh, it'll absorb things like Cowley's ult. Anything that's not penetration, pretty much, it'll absorb that. So pretty good, and then as people hit it too. Actually, no, that might be something else. But uh, Fire Incarnate, we'll get back to that later. But And has a chance to burn targets. For two turns. Usually the burn doesn't go off because it's pretty low at the beginning, 40%, but hey, that's still there for you. You might get some damage out of it. Hunter 3, penetration damage up to 192. Chance th uh, 35 to 60% to decrease attack by 30%. So that's pretty cool because it hits all enemies. It's really useful on Kali just for uh, flushing clones out of stealth, which is a huge mechanic in that dungeon. Also, she also has the, if all allies are fire, increase attack by 60% leadership. That is a very strong leadership if you're running like Morgan, Rue, uh, whatever other fires you want to bring. Maybe Damien. Nah, nah, nah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Damien's kind of underrated, honestly. But anyways, you know what I mean. Alright, so. Uh, burning skill right here. 50% chance to burn the attacker for 30% of attack for two turns when attacked. That's pretty cool. Recovers 20% of HP at the start of the turn and has a 100% chance to reflect damage equal to 50% of attack upon attack if the caster is Fire Incarnate. Remember what I said about Fire Incarnate earlier? Uh, when she does it on a four turn cooldown, she'll become Fire Incarnate for two turns. But pretty much, if things are targeting her while she's Fire Incarnate, they're going to hit themselves pretty hard. 50% of attack, so... And then right here, Climate Avenger, guaranteed counterattack or upon critical strike damage. That's good in most cases, except for Sid's dungeon. That actually kind of sucks in Sid's dungeon, but the nature of the beast. 70% chance to cast Blaze, dealing an additional damage equal to 200% of attack. Attacker's attack, by the way, not her attack. Attacker's attack when attacked for two turns. So, if you have Blaze on somebody and it, it's like a Morgan or a Saya or someone that hits super hard... And this procs, they're going to be doing so much damage to themselves if it doesn't get dispelled that it gets pretty crazy. Uh, she actually, this is actually, along with Ashley's dot, as far as I know right now, the hardest ticking dots in the game, but the advantage over Ashley's dot is 
um, it's your attacker's attack, and it, it hits the 200% right away, whereas Ashley needs 10 stacks, which takes a little bit to build up. So, overall, Electra's a pretty solid character, pretty strong tank. If you get her and you don't get an Aemon, you know, don't, don't hang your head. He's awesome there. And, yeah, so, uh, we did a pool battle on my channel, a pool battle video, me and Cash Bryant on YouTube. Uh, we did an Aemon pool. I'll let you guys go watch the video. I won't spoil it, but I do have myself an Aemon, so I am scaling it up. I am working on some guide videos for you guys. Uh, let me show you what I got going on right now as far as my heroes. So eventually what I'm going to get around to, I want to do an Aemon guide, obviously. I'm still leveling him up, as you can see here. I would also like to do a Cynthia guide. I haven't leveled her to 60. For those who don't know, don't level her to 60 yet unless you're really going to use her because you're not going to get the quest reward, uh, like all the rainbows and stuff, because Netmarble... They've acknowledged it on their forms, so they're going to send it in the mail. So if you're expecting that rainbow stuff, I mean, you can still do it. Just understand it's a week from today on 8.16. So, but Cynthia's really good. Cynthia's a sleeper character. Uh, I will also do some other guides for some other heroes here. Uh, as you can see, there's my Kali. Still working her up. I'm focusing Aemon before I focus Kali, but eventually I'll get a Kali guide out for you guys. And I... I just wanted to tell you guys, I'm, I'm really appreciative of, uh, you guys are very patient with me. I'm making mistakes on some of the, uh, like the capture, some of the other stuff. And thanks for letting me know. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not spending a ton of money on this game, and the majority of the money I have spent on this game has been donated to me. So, I cannot get guides out as fast as, say, a lot of the YouTubers out there. But I will give you organic guides for, you know, the free-to-play or very close to free-to-play player as to as fast as I can acquire things. It takes me a while to level all these guys up, but eventually when I get there and I use them and I start to like them, uh, and I start to get more familiar with them, I will definitely share with you guys what I got. Quick thoughts on Aemon, though. I will give you some quick thoughts on Aemon. Um, number one... This right here is pretty freaking stupid, especially everyone's touting the evade, but the accuracy is going to be really important too because you're going to be seeing lots of Amons in PvP as well as like if you're doing like the Renta dungeon or anyone with dodge, hell, even uh, Kali's dungeon actually. So, and then the damage, obviously really good, but we were, we were uh, in my Discord, by the way, look in my... Uh, in the title notes, there's a link to the Discord if you want to come in. We're having a good time. I've met a lot of you, uh, you know, in the Discord, on YouTube, in my Twitch, you come by. And most of you guys are super cool people, man, so really enjoying that. But my thoughts on Eamon here. We were crunching the numbers on him. Now, potential people you want to run with him. Uh, Christian, for one, because Christian's holy. Christian also has that passive where he is reducing debuffs by one turn on light heroes. And Eamon's obviously a light hero. Um, and Christian hits super hard if you get him built up all the way. So if you can get him hitting even harder passively with this, and then the protection to keep him up, and Christian's putting shields up, etc. That's really good. Now another good hero to run this with? Consider this a Saya leader, or a Saya friend, depending on what you can do. I do not know what evasion is capped at in this game because crit is capped at 80 from what most people tell me. I believe Yukeen, uh, I forget the numbers in his name, but Yukeen on uh, Twitch slash YouTube, he's the one that figured it out along with Cash Bryant and a couple other people, I think X Tachi, etc. So I'm guessing that the cap for dodge is also 80%. I cannot tell you for sure. We will try it out sometime on the testing phase. Maybe someone already knows. But Saya's leadership, for those who do not know, light and wind evasion by 20%. So consider this, right? You have Saya's leader. Potentially, you could bring another Saya as a friend unit to get her leadership again. That's 80% freaking evasion for your light units right there. And wind units, if you happen to have any wind units. And then you could run someone like uh, Akali. 
you know, granted, not all of us have Cali guys, so I know I'm getting a little bit uh, <clears throat> in the weeds here for some people, but, you know, that additional dodge, you know, she hides all the time, so that would bring up her mitigation a good amount. And then, you know, so that, there's some potential things for you guys. Uh, also, Sid. Sid is also a wind hero. Sid will put out those shields. Sid will cleanse debuffs. So that's pretty nasty if you're running that with Saya lead. Um, and then other characters you can consider running with Aemon. You need some AoE damage. Bring a Briton. Briton's pretty gnarly. He'll inc help increase Briton's damage and give him longevity. Um, what else? I think I'm sure there's some better other heroes too. Wind heroes, Ruby wouldn't be so bad. Because uh, Ruby's got that cooldown reduction, so you bring Sid along with Ruby with the extra cooldown reduction. That could be pretty nasty with this group as well. I mean, the sky's the limit, guys. Uh, and obviously the greatest hits, like Ru. Uh, another thing to consider, have a Io lead. You get that extra counter attack, so water and light. So he's water. If you run like a water light team with that counter attack, Io when he counters hits 50% harder. And then we also have with Aemon, you know, my man's guaranteeing, where is it? I think it's on his two. He's guaranteeing a counter when he hits his two every four turns. So that's pretty ridiculous. And then, you know, you could just figure out some other water synergy there. But. Counter on Esna really doesn't work that well because you want her to have her uh, Esna's revenge. You don't want her to blow it on a counter. Marduk, lol. Uh, but, you know, p potential things for you guys to think about. I will eventually come out with a full review on them. But I just wanted to give you guys some thoughts there for now. And, you know, so. I am Showtime DR, Showtime DR on Twitch. You found my YouTube, look in the notes. You can get a link to my Discord. We got a KC tab there. We're amping up for guild battle. That should be pretty fun. Uh, get your questions answered, give advice, share your experiences, etc. Uh, my Twitch. There's a link link to my Twitch in the show notes. We'd love to see you there sometime. I've been I've been dropping a couple more live show uh, videos for you guys so you can get a flavor of it and the fun we have. So, and yeah. Otherwise, guys, just you know keep farming. Good luck to you guys that are doing uh, Cali. If you're new to the game, good luck to you guys that are doing Decane. And, you know, I'll, I'll try to put out some more videos, guys. I am swamped with stuff to do right now, but complaints for later, so peace. Have a good day.